Hey everyone, my name is Luke. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Tonight is going to be my first light session for the brand new astronomy camera which I just received, the Player One Poseidon C Pro. Now, I know a lot of you out there have been following this camera with bated breath, looking for more information. So actually, at the end of this session, once I've stacked up all of the data, I'm going to be making it available for download so that you guys can take a look at the data that this camera is producing for yourselves to evaluate it. So just check the description box down below for a download link, head into my Google Drive for anybody who's interested in that kind of thing. I've currently been up and running for probably about an hour and a half now, so we're just going to jump over to the Nina screen and take a look at how things have been going. Alright, so here we are in Nina, and as you can see on the preview window, the target that I've chosen for this first light session is, of course, the Rosette Nebula. Let's take a quick look at one of these frames, just kind of zoomed in at a one-to-one -one zoom. Hopefully this is coming across for you, even through uh, YouTube compression and such, but it's incredibly low noise, I have to say. Uh, it's the pairing of that kind of IDAS NBZ filter that I'm using for this, the NBZ UHS. The Rasa 8, which is of course incredibly fast at f2, but also this sensor, which is extremely sensitive and very, very, very low noise, as is evidenced on these subframes. I think this is going to look exceptional when it's all stacked up. Over the course of the past few days, um, I have been trying to keep an eye on things, and I did get a small opportunity, like a gap in the clouds, to just test how the sensor worked on my Rasa. So, uh, as probably many of you know, the Celestron Rasa is extremely sensitive to tilt. So if there was tilt present, this was practically a, an optical test bed that was going to show it up. And I'm happy to say that it was almost completely perfect. I'll pop up some kind of before and after shots on the screen for you right here. But I had to make just a really very small tilt adjustment to correct things. We're talking one twelfth of a turn uh, on just one of the uh, adjustment bolts and everything was fixed it took literally five minutes thanks to the design of that kind of tilt adjustment i didn't have to take anything off the rasa and recenter or anything like that i just identified which um adjuster needed adjusting and like i said it was done in moments so that's really just immediate testament to the effectiveness of a rearward facing tilt adjustment uh, unit. Another thing I uh, was happy to see is the really quite small amount of vignette in the corners thanks to that, obviously the uh, corrected image circle of the Rasa, but also the larger opening aperture on the front of this camera. So this is M48 rather than the standard kind of M42. If I just right click, it'll kind of show statistics on this. So we're getting a mean of about 1500 right in the corner there. About 1760, 1750 near the rosette. So if I check each corner, 1500 and something, 1700, you can see it's, it's pretty even, all things considered. So that's a very small amount of vignette. I'm really happy with its performance. And if I just open up now the Aberration Inspector 2, you can see that all that tilt is effectively gone and we're getting a nice corrected field from this thing so uh that's uh all positive signs i'd say going forwards now i've been up and running with this thing for nearly two hours now i'd say gathering data so i'm already gonna have an image to share with you guys which i'm happy about that removes some of the stress of these kind of early tests um for anybody who followed along with my earlier video where i did the unboxing and first look I want to say I made a small mistake about the weight. So the first time I got it in my hand, I thought this feels really substantial. Uh, and I said that it's heavier than my old 2600 MC was. And it actually turns out that it's a little bit lighter to the tune of 50 grams. So this thing is 654, if memory serves correctly. And a 2600 is about 700. So there's not much in it, but I thought it was worth mentioning all the same. Uh, to Anybody with kind of a weaker focuser or a mount right at its limits, as some comments has mentioned, every gram does count, and I appreciate that. So, um, all the same, I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, within 12 hours of that video going up, by the way, I did mention there were some small issues with uh, the native drivers, but ASCOM was working fine for me. Well, within 12 hours of the video going up, player one got in contact with 
a revised ASCOM driver because they themselves had identified a few uh, small bugs, nothing that I'd actually picked up on. But all the same, that shows how responsive they were with this thing. Um, so I downloaded that and I'm using it right now and I'm happy to say it's completely stable. I haven't had a single drop frame or anything like that. It's been running uh, like a dream and they are aware of the uh, native driver issue where you can't enable cooling in Nina at this time. So uh, that's all being looked into and you know, I would assume it's a, a high, very high priority for them to get sorted. Uh, it certainly seems that way from when I was talking with them. Interesting little bit of trivia for anybody here who is bothered about this kind of thing. Though one other thing did pop up during my conversation with Player One, and that is the fact that my camera, the one I'm using right now, uh, rather coolly for me, is actually serial number 001. I've got the very first one I thought that was absolutely magnificent. And um, I know I mentioned this in my other video, but I'm going to mention it again now. You know, when this camera was kind of offered out to me for review, it really did come with absolutely zero stipulations. So, um, you know, top marks to player one for having that much confidence in their product. And also thanks to them for having confidence in me uh, to be able to review this thing and try and show it really in a fair light. And I am, <laughs> I want to try and show it at its best because I really believe in them as a company. And uh, I think they're gonna do well in the coming years. Uh, I really expect so. I will throw this in there as well. It looks like just like all the other kind of 2600s on the market in the fact that you really don't need dark frames with this thing. It's extremely, extremely clean. So I'm not going to be using them. I will be using, of course, flats and bias. And if you want to download the stacked file, they will have those applied. And um, yeah, it would be interesting to see what you guys think to uh, what you can pull from this data if you're interested in this camera. So. It is quite late at this point in time. It's a quarter to three in the morning and I want to keep this video as brief as possible and uh, hopefully semi-concise. So I'm not going to go on too much longer now and just say, as always, thanks so much for watching. If you have anything in particular you want me to look into with this camera, uh, then just leave a comment. Do mention and I'll do my best to get back to each and every one of you guys out there. Actually just popped into mind my mind there was one other thing so a few commenters mentioned that had bad experiences in the past with usb sockets and uh, so this got brought up in conversation while i was talking to player one and um, they shared very kindly some design schematics for the camera itself and effectively so the usb's board the kind of connection uh, point is reinforced by the body of the camera so any kind of torsional stress is going to be placed on the camera body rather than the actual socket itself so that's really interesting to see and i have to say had i not known that you know uh, i'd have thought something else was going on making it so solid but that's what's doing it i reckon because when i plugged the usb in the first time i thought to myself this is going nowhere it feels like you could go bloody rope climbing off it um yeah, I thought it was worth mentioning anyway because I know this is something that bothered a few people and um, there you have it. I'll put that image up on screen for you as well so you can see what it is I'm talking about. But anyway, I'm going to wrap things up about here and keep this as simple as possible. So thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for all your support to everybody who's been uh, helping me keep doing this, doing what I love doing on this channel. So uh, look after yourselves, guys. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Close, guys.